And now I'm pleased to introduce Anita George, um, one of the founding principals of George and Marciallo Attorneys at Law. Um, Anita is one of the most respected EB-5 immigration attorneys um, with a focus on, on EB-5 um, specifically. My name's Anita George, and as Sam mentioned, I'm the founding partner of George and Marziallo. We are a Seattle-based boutique law firm that specialized solely in EB-5. Um, as background, I was a forensic accountant uh, and a tax attorney that worked at three of the big four accounting firms. Um, so forensic accounting is my bread and butter, which directly weaves into the EB-5 petition, where we're convincing the US government that all the money invested in these projects are clean and have been properly sourced. We've been doing EB-5 for over a decade. We've done over 700 EB-5 immigration petitions, and we have a 100% approval rate. Um, I am an immigrant myself who's a naturalized U.S. citizen. Um, we have uh, attorneys in our firm that are fluent, including myself in Hindi, Gujarati, English, Spanish. Uh, so we speak multiple languages and we have represented clients from Canada, India, Philippines, Vietnam, Australia, Europe, um, most of the countries in the world. We are an independent uh, immigration attorney, which means we do not represent regional centers. We exclusively represent the EB-5 investor. So we have never had or will never have any conflict of interest in working with clients, whether they work with EB-5AN or other regional centers. We, we do not have exclusivity with any of the regional centers. If one particular attorney has just worked with one regional center, you have a red flag, right? We've filed with all 10 regional centers across the country. It doesn't matter to us where the investor goes, and that's how it should be. We're only looking out for the client's best interest. We're not telling them where to invest. We have a very open and transparent process. What I mean by that is everything is done over Dropbox, and clients has, client has the ability to look at the immigration forms we're working on to look at the filing copy that we're working on, to look at the cover letter, to look at all the exhibits that are being built and give us comments in real time through the Dropbox app. And we then respond to those comments in real time as well. I think that's what differentiates us is that our turnaround time for a US or Canadian file is usually seven to 14 business days, which is the fastest of anyone in the industry. There's no source we've never seen. There's no problem we've never encountered. So we know exactly what to expect and we know exactly what to request from the client. And that really speeds up the process. We're a boutique, we only do EB-5, that's our sole focus. So at any given point a week, we only take a limited number of files and we turn them out. Client has a copy of what was filed. Client can see if any mistakes were made. Client can give us comments and that work product stays with the client until the end of the process. And I think one one of the things that I've I've heard just over time from investors that have worked with you is your responsiveness, you know, mm -hmm. access on nights, weekends, availability on WhatsApp to yes. questions, things that come up. In terms of responsiveness, Sam, I've been called names like AI bot or the woman that never sleeps. Uh, we are very responsive around the clock. We have weekend appointments for our existing clients. Uh, we accommodate any which way we can. And the reason for that is we want to keep the ball rolling. We bend over backward because, again, this is a firm built by an immigrant who's been through the anxiety of the entire immigration process. And it took me 15 years to get here. So I just hope to make it smoother and painless for my clients. I do think that we have a medium pricing model, but we want to make sure that there are no RFEs. And if there are RFEs, that's on us. We cover that. That is not something we pass on to the client. We, we like to see it in advance. We, we like to close all the loopholes, which is why we go the extra step of trying to understand what USCIS may request and try to document that in advance before it's requested. Our business philosophy is we don't want to keep the client waiting because we understand that it comes with a lot of stress. The entire immigration process after making so much investment comes with a lot of stress. So. In our initial consults, we try to warn clients about the pitfalls, what's to come, you know, what receipts can they expect, how there's going to be a transfer of 485, how the 131 is going to be adjudicated, whether they're going to get a combo card, whether they're going to get a five-year EAD, a two-year EAD. I think it's important to work with someone who's done this day in and day out so they know 
every single scenario that can go wrong and you can plan for that. Again, being in the industry for 11 years, what I have noticed is when clients do have Indian source of funds, um, we do a lot of cleanup work for attorneys that have previously filed Indian source of funds for lack of knowledge, right? And what we've noticed the practice is when Indian source of funds is involved, the attorney is either coordinating with the CA in India or is coordinating with a co-counsel here uh, who understands Indian documents. And then you now have a three-way conversation between that accountant in India, between the immigration lawyer here and the client as well. So it's, it's, it's a massive ping pong. But my background, I was educated in India until the age of 18. I can read and understand Hindi, Gujarati, Punjabi, Marathi. These are the four language, I, languages that I can read, write, you know, um, and understand. We also understand the local country rules. These little things that are just not within the purview of a lot of attorneys that have not operated out of India or understand the Indian source of funds. Whether it's, you know, understanding what the Indian local rules are or what the Canadian tax structure is, we have 11 years of experience in doing this that we can answer any question without a third party being involved in the conversation.